Have you ever wondered what it's like to be an introvert? It's a question that sparks curiosity, and often some misconceptions too. So let's start from scratch and understand the concept of introversion, shall we? Introversion, at its core, is about energy. Imagine energy as a battery. For introverts, social interactions can be like a power-consuming application, gradually draining their battery. On the other hand, solitude acts as a charger, replenishing their energy levels. It's not that they dislike people or socializing, but rather, they need time alone to recharge. Common misconceptions paint introverts as shy or antisocial. But remember, shyness stems from fear of social judgment. An antisocial behavior indicates a lack of interest in social interactions. Introverts, however, can enjoy socializing, but they just prefer meaningful, one-on-one -on -one conversations over large group settings. So, introversion is not about being shy or antisocial, it's about where you draw your energy from. Let's delve deeper and explore this fascinating world, shall we? Let's take a step back to childhood and adolescence. Picture a young, introverted soul navigating the bustling corridors of school life. This child isn't necessarily shy or reserved, but they do find energy in solitude, in quiet moments of contemplation, and in the depths of their own vivid imagination. Now, imagine the same child in a group of peers, perhaps on a playground or at a birthday party. They aren't the loudest or the most talkative, but they listen, they observe, they soak in the world around them. They may not always share their thoughts, but when they do, it's often insightful and thought-provoking. Their friendships are few but deep. They tend to favor meaningful one-on-one -on -one interactions over large group settings. They might spend lunch breaks reading a book or sketching in a notebook, their minds a whirlwind of creativity and introspection. Introverted youth may seem quiet, but their inner world is full of rich and vibrant thoughts. Solitude, for introverts, is not loneliness. It's a rich tapestry of self-discovery, where they find their most authentic selves. Picture a serene forest, where each tree stands alone, yet contributes to the beauty of the whole. That's the introverted experience of solitude. From an early age, solitude becomes a sanctuary for introverts. It's in these quiet moments that they tap into their reservoir of creativity, conjuring up vibrant worlds within their minds. It's here that they discover the rhythm of their thoughts, the cadence of their dreams, and the strength of their convictions. Think of solitude as a haven, a space where introverts recharge. It's a place where they can be at peace, away from the cacophony of the outside world. It's a sanctuary where they can listen to their inner voice, nurturing their ideas, and fostering their self-growth. For introverts, solitude is a powerful tool for self-reflection and creativity. As introverts grow into adulthood, their unique qualities continue to shape their experiences. This quiet strength often manifests in their professional lives, where they excel in roles that require deep focus and thoughtful analysis. From accomplished writers to astute researchers, introverted adults often thrive in careers that allow for solitude and contemplation. But it's not all about work. Introverts also build meaningful relationships, though perhaps fewer in number than their extroverted counterparts. They choose quality over quantity, fostering deep bonds with a select few. This is not because they are socially inept, but because they value profound connections over surface-level interactions. And let us not forget, fulfillment for introverts often takes a different form. They find joy not in the noise and bustle of social gatherings, but in the quiet moments of solitude, reading a good book, exploring a new hobby, or simply enjoying their own company. In adulthood, introverts can leverage their introspective nature to build deep connections and excel in their chosen careers. Understanding the differences between introverts and extroverts can foster empathy and understanding. Introverts and extroverts, two sides of the same coin, complement each other in distinctive ways. Introverts, often seen as reflective and introspective, tend to recharge by spending time alone. They prefer deep, meaningful conversations over small talk and may take a step back in large social gatherings. On the other hand, extroverts, the so-called life of the party, thrive in social situations. 
they gain energy from interacting with others, enjoy being in the spotlight, and generally prefer a variety of activities. These differences aren't drawbacks, instead, they create a rich tapestry of human interaction. Imagine a world where the introspective depth of the introvert meets the vivacious energy of the extrovert. They complete each other, the extrovert drawing the introvert out of their shell, while the introvert provides a calming, thoughtful presence. By understanding our differences, we can build more inclusive and understanding communities. Embracing introversion can lead to a fulfilling and authentic life. To be an introvert is to have a rich inner world, a sanctuary of thought and introspection. It's a gift that allows you to connect deeply with yourself and others, to reflect, and to appreciate the quieter moments in life. In a society that often praises extroversion, it can be challenging to be an introvert. But remember your introverted qualities are not weaknesses. They are strengths. Your ability to listen, to empathize, to think before you speak, these are aspects of your character that make you unique and valuable. Communicating your needs is also essential. It's okay to need time alone to recharge. It's okay to prefer smaller gatherings. And it's okay to be thoughtful and introspective. Be proud of who you are. When introverts embrace their unique qualities, they can live authentically and thrive in their own way. So, what's it like to be an introvert, you might ask? Well, it's a journey of self-discovery and growth, steeped in the richness of solitude. It begins in youth, where introverted children and teenagers navigate the complexities of social situations and friendships, often finding comfort and creativity in their own company. As they grow and mature into adulthood, introverts continue to flourish, building meaningful relationships and thriving in their careers, all while staying true to their introspective nature. The introvert-extrovert dynamic plays a significant role in our society, and understanding these differences is key to fostering empathy and mutual respect. Embracing introversion is not just about self-acceptance, but also about communicating one's needs effectively and appreciating the unique qualities that introverts bring to the table. And remember, there's no one-size-fits-all when it comes to personality types. By understanding and accepting introversion, we can foster a world where both introverts and extroverts can thrive.